It is officially March, and you know what that means. That's right. It's time for NBA fans to care about the draft for the first time. It's your official introduction to the 2024 NBA draft class on today's episode of Locked On Magic. You are Locked On Magic, your daily Orlando magic podcast, part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Indeed, Locked On Magic. Today is March 4th, 2024. It will be March 5th, 2024. My name is Philip Rosenreich. I'm the expert insight editor over at OrlandoMagicDaily.com. Of course, follow me on Twitter at R underscore OMD. On today's episode of Locked On Magic, it is officially March. Happy free throw awareness month. The NCAA tournament is coming up in a couple of weeks. We've got conference tournaments next week. So it is time to take a break from the craziness of the playoffs, take a break from the playoff chase. We'll get back to that tomorrow. It's time for your official introduction to the 2024 draft class. We'll get that from Richard Stamen of Locked On NBA Big Board coming up here in just a moment. But first, we want to thank you again for making Locked On Magic part of your day every day, no matter when you listen to us, whether it's first thing in the morning, whether it's right when we upload. We truly appreciate you making Locked On Magic part of your day every day. Remember, there's a great Locked On podcast covering every single team in the NBA. Just search for Locked On and the team you're looking for, the Locked On Podcast Network. It's your team every day. Today's episode of Locked On Magic is brought to you by FanDuel. Make every moment more. Right now, new customers get $150 in bonus bets with any winning $5 bet. That's $150 if your bet wins. Visit FanDuel.com slash Locked On to get started. Before we dive into the conversation with Richard Stamen, um, I want to... Take this step back here and, and, and refocus ourselves on the draft. I'm not going to talk very long about this, but it is important to be ready on the draft. And, and as I will admit uh, on the conversation that I had with Richard here, I'm behind on my draft prep. I, I'm sure you are too. Um, we're all a little behind on our draft prep because the Magic are indeed in a playoff chase. Ooh, that's fun, isn't it? It's exciting. We will do more stuff breaking down the daily happenings and the standings. We will really focus a lot on the playoffs from here on out because Tuesday's game against Charlotte is actually the final game of the third quarter of the season. We will be officially in the final quarter of the season, the final 20 games of the season. And obviously we are in a deep, deep playoff push. But as many of you know, and I read your comments and I see all the comments on Twitter, um, we are still thinking big picture. And while I agree with a lot of you, and, and, and I do kind of have this sense that there's perhaps a very good chance that the Magic do end up trading this pick, the, their first round pick in 2024, it is still an opportunity to add talent. And as we've seen with the Oklahoma City Thunder, just because you have the tools to go out and get some major players does not mean that you should not stay invested in your young players. And again, we're going to learn a lot about this team in the playoffs. And I think as I, I, I note here in the conversation, what the Magic actually need, what the Magic should actually be looking at for the NBA draft, what they're looking for in free agency, honestly, is not something they're going to know until they get into a playoff series, until they see what holes get exposed, how players react, how players respond to the playoff pressure. So right now, as is always the case, you're casting a ridiculously wide net. You need to be looking at everybody and overturning and turning over every stone. We're going to talk about this draft in generalities. We'll talk about big picture stuff. We'll talk about guys that the Magic will look at. There's a lot of things to get to, but here are my initial takes on the NBA draft class for this season. Um, it is not a particularly strong class at the top. I think everybody admits that, and everybody understands that uh, about this group. Um, that you know, you're looking at a lot of uh, at a draft that does not have runaway stars, but. I think we can always reiterate this. Just because it is not a particularly strong class at the top does not mean it is not a deep class. It does not mean that there are not players who will contribute to winning teams and maybe one day become all-stars too. That may make it hard to move around in the draft perhaps. And, and again, I would always argue my, my, my draft philosophy is usually find your guy. Don't worry about where you're picking. Find your guy and then make sure you go get him. If you really believe in a player, go get him. I don't know if the Magic are quite there yet. Again, I think the Magic probably need to get a little older. I, I don't know how much a rookie would help them. They're going to have essentially a rookie in Jet Howard next year as well. Anthony Black's going to struggle to find playing time. 
the Magic might be willing to take on a little bit more of a project, park him in Osceola like they've done with Jet Howard and, and see where things go. But this is, this is still an opportunity to add talent. And so never, ever, 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 ever forget that. Um, there are, there is talent in this draft and while I'm behind and I'm very thankful for Richard for helping catch me up and I'm sure he will catch you up as well. The magic are not a team that can afford to lose opportunities. Again, they're going to have to start paying some players here very, very soon. And their ability to draft in the 16, 17, 18, 19, 20 range, magic are probably picking 17 to 18th at the moment, um, is going to be really important. Cole Anthony was the 16th pick in the draft, real our 15th pick in the draft. A really good pick, it turns out, for the 15th pick in the draft. Um, Chumo KK, not so much. Caleb Houston, the second round pick, we'll see. Um, Jed Howard, we don't know. The Magic's ability to add talent is still going to be very, 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 very important. Obviously, this is the time that a lot of NBA people start focusing on the draft. While there are playoff races going on, the NCAA tournament is a big ticket item. It is a big Big, big, big thing, or a big moment uh, for NBA people like me who are very in on our season. And I follow a little college. I, I cover UCF, uh, UCF uh, basketball, so I've been watching a little bit of the Big Twelve. Um, so you heard some talk about Johnny Furphy coming up. Uh, I'm a little bit out on Kevin, Kevin McCuller, um, uh, Eves Missy. I want to say from Baylor is interesting to me as well. But um, we're, for the most part. A lot of us don't pay much attention because we're so focused on the NBA until the NCAA tournament, until pressure games. And yes, that does lead to the logical fallacy of putting too much stock in the NCAA tournament. But this is the time that a lot of us who follow the NBA more religiously get a closer look at some of these college players. Now, obviously, not every player in this draft is is college player. We saw a couple of them play in the Rising Stars game uh, on All-Star Weekend. Uh, Matas Muzelis, Ron Holland, um, there are a lot of players. This is a good G League Ignite crop. Now, obviously not kind of the Jalen Green, Jonathan Kuminga class, but this is still a very talented group of G League Ignite players who are going to be entering the league. There's a couple of really high-level international prospects like Alex Saar, who, who's playing in Australia, who are probably going to dot the top of this draft. So this is not a particularly strong college class um, uh, for the NBA. As you're getting ready to fill out your brackets, as you're getting ready for the NCAA tournament, as we're getting ready for conference tournaments next week, we're going to name a couple players here that will help you get ready and help you kind of know what to look for and what the Magic are looking for, what the Magic might be looking for when we get into the draft. Like I said, if you don't follow Richard Stamen, uh, he is at Mavs Draft on Twitter. He uh, covers the NBA draft for Locked On NBA Big Board as well as his own site. He is a Magic. He is a Magic sympathizer, Magic fan as well. So we talk a lot in this in this conversation coming up, not just about the individual prospects that the Magic could be looking at. But we also talk a lot about what the Magic's drafting philosophy should be, what they should be looking for, what they should be highlighting now that they're entering this new phase. So this is a wide-ranging conversation, a lot to get into. This will be your introduction to the 2024 NBA draft class. We're going to hit that coming up here in just a moment. But first, today's episode of Locked on Magic is brought to you by our friends, over at BetterHelp. Sometimes we all need the opportunity to get something off our chest. Big or small, certain things can really start to get to you. And not having someone to talk to about it, not having someone in your corner, who's always in your corner, can be really tough. But someone who's also going to hold you accountable and be unbiased and give you, what, give you a different perspective. So today, I want to say that a, you're you're here. We're we're listening. Uh, you know, I'm not Fraser Crane, but but we're listening. Having someone that's able to kind of listen listen to you, hear your problems, absorb your problems, offer some empathy. That goes such a long way. I know. I, you know, I'm a solo writer. I'm a freelance writer. It's a big wide world out there. Just having someone to listen. You know, maybe not even fully understand everything I'm going through, but listen and have me explain it and give me their perspective. That helps me so much, and it helps give me the energy to give you the great podcasts and great content that I that I do because you know we all need to get stuff off our chest sometimes. Therapy can truly be different for everyone. It helps me with that. It may help you with something else. Most of us have bigger problems in our favorite sports teams, and it's important to get things off your chest every once in a while, especially in a constructive manner. 
If you're thinking of starting therapy, give BetterHelp a try. It's entirely online, designed to be flexible and suited to your schedule. Visit betterhelp.com slash locked on NBA to get 10% off your first month. That's betterhelp, H E L P.com slash locked on NBA. We want to thank you for making Locked On Magic part of your day every day. For your next listen, be sure to check out the Locked On Sports Today 24-7 streaming channel on YouTube and now available on the Amazon Fire TV and the free Fire TV channels app. Locked On Sports Today is here for you 24-7 covering the top sports stories of the day with the local experts of Locked On plus our national shows covering every league. Find Locked On Sports Today now available on the free Fire TV channels app. Now, let's get to our conversation with Richard Stamen of Locked On NBA Big Board. And we are now joined by our good friend, Richard Stamen, to help us uh, learn something about the NBA draft, something that maybe Magic fans haven't been as focused on this year. It's it's weird. It's new. I don't, I don't quite know what to, what to do with my hands, uh, but it is March. It is that time of year when NBA fans start to become college basketball and draft experts. So let's talk to our draft expert, Richard, how are you doing today? Hey, I'm doing good. It's good to be back on the show. Yeah, absolutely. Always great to have you on. You, you helped me with, with my draft prep and my tra- and, and, and getting ready for ready for things. And, and, and look, I, I have to admit before we get started, I am I am coming in to this draft class and, and into this draft prep is, is a bit of a, a, a bit of a rube. Like I, I have not done nearly as much work looking at the co- at the college prospects, at the G League prospects. Um, and the international prospects as I have in years past. Um, if you want to know why, just look at the standings. Um, so let's let's kind of before we like nail down specific things and, and and talk about the magic specifically, let's talk about this draft class as a whole because generally I think the the wrap on this class is it's it's not a, a great class, but from what I understand and, and correct me if I'm wrong or, or give me your evaluation, that opinion is merely because the top isn't great. How would you assess how this class is shaping up as we're getting to March, the end of the G League season, the end of international seasons, and of course the NCAA tournament? Yeah, it's uh, it's an underwhelming class. There's really no standout alpha guy. It's kind of weak really throughout the top 15 or so. It's got some good depth because I think every draft at this point does. It's just the nature of basketball at this point. But it's a draft that Magic fans should be very thankful they don't have that their Magic just are good now. That this is not a draft they have to worry about who who they're taking, what they have to guess on. Because right now, number one is a guess, number two is a guess. You can't find many people with the same top player at the moment, and you also can't find many people with the same even seven players in the top ten. So it's a it's a wild class at the moment. Yeah, and, and look, there's 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 names that I think uh, a lot of people are at least vaguely familiar with you know Alex Sar someone that that I've heard of we saw uh in the uh in in the Rising Stars game I was you know I know for what the Rising Stars game is I was really impressed with Matas Bazelis and how he kind of hung tough with whatever they were playing in in that game but that was a good introduction I think uh for his for him to to a wider audience especially considering that G League that uh G League group beat the Victor Wembanyama led team. Uh, I know on on one of the recent episodes of Locked on NBA Big Board, they talked about Cody Williams from, from Colorado. Um, obviously, the Magic aren't maybe necessarily looking at some of some of those guys. So, you know, it's been a while since the Magic drafted in the middle. The last time they had kind of two middle picks was Cole Anthony and Chimo KK. Um, that may be the level of player that the Magic are looking at. How would you assess that range then that the Magic are picking at if, you know, maybe those top 15 guys aren't blowing people away? Yeah, one of two things is going to happen. They're going to have to either reach for need and actually not even really reach. I think a lot of teams would do it. So like it's hard to say what's truly a reach or somebody who was considered a top 10 to 12 prospect is going to fall in their lap. And ideally that's what happens. And of course, you don't want it to be like another guard probably at this point. But if it's someone like, say, Donovan Klingon, who I think is still top 10, um, I think he's somebody that he could easily make a difference with this magic team, for example. Yeah. And, yeah, and obviously, I, I mean, I think a lot, there, there's a lot to, lot to learn. And, and, you know, I, I, I know I make this point about the magic a lot. Um, we don't know what this magic team needs yet. Um, you know, it, we, obviously shooting, we'll get to shooting here in a minute. Um, but 
Um, we know the Magic needs shooting, but uh, other than that, you know, I think we don't know what this Magic team needs. Uh, I think potentially what the Magic do at the draft will be a little bit of a preview of what they're aiming to do in in free agency. Uh, and, and again, a lot of that stuff isn't going to reveal itself till the Magic get into into a playoff series. Um, and so, you know, before we dive into specific prospects, then h- how would you assess then how the Magic should approach this draft? You know, because because things change. You know, you know, I, I know a lot of, and, and I'll, I'll ask you about the Magic rookies here before we dive in uh, a little bit too. But um, you know, when you're drafting sixth, even though the Magic felt like they were kind of on the cusp of you know, doing something more when you're drafting six, the talent level is so high drafting the best player is still the right choice. When you're drafting, you know, what are the magic projected draft right now? 15, 16, 17, 18. Yep. That best player available changes because your, your pool of potential players, I think grows, you know, there's only so many players that you're looking at when you're picking number one, when you're picking number six, even when you're picking 11. Uh, the deeper into the draft you go, the, the bigger your player, the, you know, the closer, the narrow the margins are between players. How much should the Magic's draft approach change now that they're picking in the middle rather than in the lottery? Yeah, it's, it, first of all, if they even keep the pick. If uh, they even keep I'm, the pick. Let's I'm assume that, let's, you know, for the purposes well, of this, yeah, yeah, let's yeah. assume they're keeping the pick because, sure. you know, we want, you got to prepare for the prospects. Yeah. Yeah. It, we could pump the episode in five minutes. I'm, I'm sure you'd love <laughs> yeah. that, but yeah. <laughs> no, I think, okay. So there's, there's a few ways to look at it. You could do a lottery ticket kind of guy in this draft. It's actually not a terrible idea because historically, if I'm not mistaken in bad drafts, the best players aren't always at the top. So there's a chance you find the hidden gem right there. It's currently 17. But at the same time, the Magic don't need, like, they've got their alpha, right? They've got their second guy, too, with Franz. I mean, they have a lot of really good surrounding pieces, and the hope is that Anthony Black turns into that really good third, right? Or even maybe even contest Franz for second, or hopefully even Powell for first. I think that's very optimistic. But, you know, the hope is he comes into that top three mix. So you don't need that as much. Wouldn't be opposed to it. Ideally, for me, I'd... Just going into names right away. I mean, I'd go right after Dalton Connect if he's still there. He's tearing up the SEC. Probably won't be there. But if he is, I mean, he's a shooter. He can attack closeouts. He can create a little bit. Super smart. Beautiful shot, by the way. If you ever want to, like, if you're trying to teach someone how to shoot, just show him Dalton Connect's form. I, I think he'd fit so perfectly here. Yeah, and and that's a guy that I've seen. Uh, you know, it still feels a little early to look at mock drafts too much because uh, there's so much to go. But uh, you know, Dalton Connect, I think he's he's just coming off a, a huge game for 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 Tennessee. Um, he he's averaging uh, 20.8 points per game this year. Just pulled up his stats, so uh, 20.8 points per game, uh, shooting 41.4 percent from beyond the arc, 76 and a half percent from the foul line this year. He is a fifth-year player, so he's on a little bit on the older side. He transferred from Northern. He, he did, spent two years in junior, junior college, two years at Northern Colorado before transferring to Tennessee. So, you know, when you when you look at you know like you look at the Miami Heat, and, and you know Jaime Jaquez was was maybe a, a little bit of a higher uh, grade prospect. You know, he's been on big stages with UCLA, but when you look at playoff teams. You're look. You're sometimes looking for guys that can make an instant impact, and usually those guys are the older players. You know, one of you know Jaime Hakez is, is a great player, but I think, and I mean, this is probably going to be one of the storylines in, in in the draft um, that's going to continue to evolve in the draft. Um, the a lot of teams looking for potential will draft young and and roll the dice on younger guys, and a lot of teams that want guys that make an instant impact will look for older players like Dalton connect. And, and again, connect had a really, really strong game. He's coming, you know, as, as recording this, I think they, they probably played this weekend, but he scored 39 points, made five of eight threes in an, in an eight point win over Auburn. Auburn's a pretty solid team scored 24 the game before that against Texas A&M. You know, this is a guy that can get hot and, and, and make, make some shots. And obviously that's what the magic are, are looking for, looking for too. All right, we're, we're going to take a quick break and get, tell you a quick word from our friends over at FanDuel. Get buckets. Buckets. It's always about buckets. With your first bet on FanDuel, America's number one sportsbook. Because right now, 
New customers get $150 in bonus bets with any winning $5 bet. That's $150 if your bet wins. Bet on all your favorite NBA players and teams with quick bets, live same game parlays, exclusive props, and more. Just visit FanDuel.com slash locked on and shoot your shot today. FanDuel is the official sportsbook partner of the NBA. Um, obviously, you know, we, we've hinted at this connect is one of the guys I think you have to have uh, on the list, but who are the other big shooters in this draft? Cause obviously I think most magic fans would recognize and, and they perhaps address that in the draft, although they're not using him in jet Howard shooting is still the biggest need for this team. Who are the other shooters? If, if we're going to be obsessed with that, um, that the magic should be looking at in this draft class. Yeah. The, right now it's so hard to just based on where mock drafts have guys and everything like it's I think the the combine in a couple months will do a lot of help but <clears throat> to me I think some of the best guys in that range Jared McCain but the problem with Jared McCain though before I even dive into him and the next guy he's 6'3 like he he is ideal for what the magic need on on the wings but he's three inches short of what he needs to be um there's also Bobby Clintman he's 6'10 has really good upside as a shooter um I really like Tyler Smith of the G League Ignite. I think Alex Caravan, somebody that could really rise. Uh, Keyshawn George over at Miami. There's a lot of different names where it's like, okay, how how do you project them now necessarily um, to where they are on mock drafts? Like guys like Johnny Furphy, for example. He's probably getting a lottery at this rate, but the Magic are only a couple picks removed from the lottery. They might actually have a play at him, and he's one of those combo high upside, high, you know, he can help right now almost a floor guy. It's tough. There's a lot of different names, though. If the Magic needs shooting, like, again, this is just, it's going to be like this in every draft. There's depth across the board. This is a draft that they can look at and say, okay, there is value that we can take away from here. May not find a superstar, but are the Magic in the need for that? Like, absolutely not. No. And, and you know, you you, bet, you mentioned it. Like, in drafts like these, guys do slip through the cracks. And, you know, this maybe, I don't want to say this directly. I don't think it's this bad, but... This draft, because there's so much uncertainty at the top, and it's not like uncertainty, like when the Magic got the number one pick, when everyone said, oh, if you're picking between Paolo, Chet, and Jabari Smith, like you're making a good choice no matter what. It's, it's just what's your preference. This feels more like the Anthony Bennett, Victor Oladipo draft. Um, but having said that, it's important to remember that in that draft, to, to your point, um, Giannis went 15. Rudy Gobert went, I think, 27 in, the, in that draft. There are still quality players, and... A lot of those guys were raw players that needed to be developed. The Magic don't necessarily need that. So it's, it's you know, what are the Magic looking for um, in, in this draft? And obviously there are some shooting options, but is there also that that perfect fit um, that, that they're looking for? Because like you said, the Magic tend to want size. Um, you know, it's, yep. it's, it's the running joke in the league. Um, you know, Magic fans joke about it. I think, I think Matt, a lot of media covering the, covering the NBA joke about it. The Magic love love their length. They love their size. Um, who is who is the all who is the all Jeff Weltman uh, team player uh, in this draft? That's just kind of the the rangy forward with long with arms that are longer than they than than humanly possible. With the length, that's where it gets tough. Um, I'm trying to think of who has like crazy wingspan and everything. Um, I can't remember if Ulrich uh, Chomchi if he has if I, I might have botched his name like no other by the way. Um, I want to say he has a really good frame. He's 6'11". Um, I think he's somebody who has long arms at the moment. Uh, but sometimes that stuff can trick you because there are guys yeah. like Traquavion Smith. If they're skinny, they can really trick you with long arms. And I thought Traquavion Smith had like super long arms. He had like a plus three wingspan. And again, it's just that skin and bones that makes it look a little bit thinner. Same with Bones Island. That's why he got that name. But I think if there was somebody that really fits it, I don't know if his wingspan's that much. But I would go with Johnny Furphy. He's a six nine wing. Like that's probably the best candidate. And he checks every box for what they need. Like he's really intelligent, can shoot the ball. I, I like his game a lot. He's been one of the big risers out of Kansas. Yeah, Furphy. Furphy has had a really good season, uh, averaging nine point two points per game for the year, thirty seven point four percent from deep, seventy five point eight percent from the foul line in conference play, uh, which I think a lot of a lot of generally NBA people tend to look tend to like cut out the fat and only look at conference play. 
Um, 12.2 points per game, 38.1% from three, 77.4% from the foul line. Um, I know, you know, maybe UCF fans will be a little bit down on some of the Kansas guys after what they they did to them very early in the season. But Furphy is, he, he like, I remember watching him when, when Kansas came to play UCF and was like, okay, this, this guy checks the box, checks a lot of boxes at the Magic. The Magic, like, I think he's more athletic from what I've seen at least then, then he looks and that, that may be a way of saying he's white and he's athletic. Um, but uh, I, I'll admit that I, I can admit that, let I know that, know that bias creeps in. Um, but he, you know, he definitely, I think he's someone that definitely does check a, a lot, a lot of boxes. Um, the NCAA tournament is coming up. Conference tournaments are coming up. Um, and, and obviously there's a lot of G league guys. There's a lot of international players, but as NBA fans, as the basketball, as the American basketball world at least turns to the NCAA tournament and, and gets these last impressions of these guys, who's someone that could make a big name for themselves in the NCAA tournament, you know, maybe in the Magic's range, but could either play themselves out of the Magic's range or can play themselves into, into that middle group? Or who are you? Who are you watching as we get closer to the end of the college basketball season? Is, is maybe yeah, yeah. There's there's several guys. I think Deron Holmes is somebody that he's he's not necessarily what I the ideal Magic player looks like, but he is front court depth. He could play some. I'm, tough to say if he'll truly play center, but he's somebody who I would keep an eye on at Dayton. Their team that the A10 is not super strong this year. They make some noise in the tournament. I can see him being in that mix. Um, Trey Alexander at Creighton is somebody who I know the Magic do not need guards, but we talked about that length. He's six four with like a, I want to say almost a six ten wingspan, ridiculously long on the guards, or excuse me, on the uh, just long arms. But he's a guard, can play multiple de- defensive positions, can shoot, play on and off ball. I think he'd be interesting. Uh, Dalton connects though. Like I hate to go back to him. Yeah, he's the big name, right? Like if he kind of stinks in March, which is unbelievably unlikely but also tennessee like no disrespect to tennessee but they they have, a, they have a history yeah could something happen or knowing the magic when they need him not to do perfect they'll have like they're finally they're finally going to do what they need to do so that those are a few guys um i'm trying to think if there's somebody else but for the most part in terms of what the magic need i mean maybe alex caravan plays his way up into the first round that would help a lot uh, but they could also just take him in the second round if not yeah. Yeah. I mean, obviously there's, there's still a lot of information to gather. I mean, I know most of the season is done and and you don't want to put too much stress on the NCAA tournament, although that leaves a, a really good lasting impression, but it, it, it does feel like a lot is still up in the air. And so these pressure games, I think are going to, um, are going to, to mean a, a, a lot more and, and, and mean more. And again, like the magics, it, the magics needs to f- have changed. Like it's, it's, you, you know, our, they, they aren't drafting to see what talent can do. Like they want guys with upside, you know, you don't want a guy that is what he is out of his rookie year. Like I, I tell people all the time, like you don't draft a player for their rookie year. You draft them for the, the life of that rookie contract, those first four years. And so if it takes a little time to develop you, that's fine. You don't want that rookie year to be their best year. You want players who are going to continue to get better. And obviously when you're, you know, 18, 19, 20 years old, you, sh- you should get better. You're not done developing uh, just because you entered the NBA um, but the magic aren't looking necessarily for the high upside guy. They're probably looking for someone that's going to help them contribute to win. And, you know, Orlando, and, and I want to talk about the magic's rookies here in, in a minute. Um, but the way the magic have handled jet Howard and, and the fact that they've had him in the G league, how much does, how much should that change what the magic are doing? Because essentially next year, Jed Howard's going to be a rookie. Like he's going to play his rookie seat. You know, he's, he will not officially be a rookie obviously because he's played games this year, but, um, but how, how much should the fact that they're probably going to have a, a player who's essentially a rookie on their roster, who fits a lot of the needs that we know that this team needs as far as, as a shoot, as a shooting wing, how, how much should that affect what the magic do? And, and you mentioned Deron Holmes and, and maybe some of the other bigs, but do the magic look, elsewhere because they know that they they kind of got that rookie shooter in their back pocket yeah i i think this team the thing we've seen is i mean remember that stretch i, I don't even remember what month it was at this point where everyone was down gary harris was out like we met we did not see much shooting i don't think from the magic like we i mean it's not like they need shooting like like the magic's top two needs this off one shooter's shooting. not gonna fix it yeah, yeah like yeah. one shooter doesn't solve everything yeah. and who knows what happens to gary Harris this year so you might need to 
because also here's I mean, what happened with Joe Ingles and Cole Anthony too. Yeah. I call I Cole Anthony's had a down year, but he's still a very good off ball shooter. Yeah. And who knows? It's like, I, I don't think you can just go now. Like, and I'm not saying that's what you're doing, obviously, but yeah, like, yeah, yeah, you yeah. know, I think there are going to be some people who say, well, we have Jed Howard coming. What do we need to worry about? Like, I, I think you need to add as much depth in that regard as possible and really have somebody ideally who can not only just shoot, but can they do other things after they're blitzed? Like Duncan Robinson, obviously, is the most known, I think, just plain shooter, but he also is really good at making reads out of traps. Can they find someone who does that or just simply attacks closeouts, creates a little bit? That's where I think the challenge is going to be and what they look for in a shooter. I, I, I'm sure you're you're following this this trend too, and, and and I don't know how much it impacts your analysis, especially as you're looking at you know you're looking at prospects and you look at you know how prospects can improve. But you know the, the Ringer just came out with that article, um, and it builds on this point about how teams are using the G League more than ever to develop their players and and using it as a true develop development system. How much does that? How much does that trend? And obviously, the Magic have kind of done it with Jet Howard. You know, you saw the you know the, you know the feature of that article was the Hawks doing it with Jalen Johnson. We've seen um, Tyler Taylor Hendricks with with the Utah Jazz. You know, spend the first half of the season essentially in the G League. Now that Utah has kind of cleared the roster space a little bit, he's playing a lot more for them. How much does the prevalence and, and the increase of use of that tool change how you slot guys? Because maybe teams can take a risk on a guy and say, hey, we're just going to park him, park him in our G league affiliate, especially now that every team's going to have a, a, their own G league affiliate. We're going to just park him there, you know, for a good chunk of the year and check in on him a, a year, a year later. Is that, yeah, does, that I mean, does that change how we shake our big boards or shake, shake our mock drafts now? I think, I think it should. I mean, you look at a lot of people, then the stigma almost of, Oh, they played in the G League. They must be doing really poorly. Like that's always what it's been for, like whether it's warranted or not. Obviously, I think this year with almost, I, I want to say it's a record number of first round. It's picks something right like it's something like fifty percent of the first of the yeah. first round is played in the G League. And yeah, and look, I, I want to talk about the Magic's rookies here in a minute. But um, if Markel Fultz doesn't get hurt, I, I think Anthony Black spends some time in the G League. Yeah, because you need like they've finally figured it out. It's not. For the longest time, it was, oh, you only go to the G League if you're doing poorly or you're so out of the rotation, you need real run. And now it's, hey, we don't really have many opportunities for you to run off of screens because teams know you're going to do that. It's not going to help us right now. Go do that in the NBA G League, get some run. Whereas Anthony Black, hey, we haven't been able to run you at point guard, play at a fast tempo, so when you're ready when your number's called. And that's what I think teams are doing rather than like, it's not a punishment, right? And that's yeah. what it always feels like. It's always been labeled as I think they're just using it right. And that should factor into it more is now instead of draft and stash, for example, when teams would say, oh, just send them overseas, they lose control over what's being developed. Now they have the first say of what's what's being, you know, just brought up. Yeah. Yeah. It's, it's it's definitely a tool. And and obviously, like for a team like the Magic, and I'm sure there's a lot of teams, especially in the back end of the draft, like that promise, uh, you know, it, like. Oklahoma City did this with with uh, with uh, Andre Ro Ro Robertson uh, or Josh H Josh Hestis. Um, you know they picked him in the first round. And said, "Hey, yes. we're gonna, we're going to park you in the G League for a year." And uh, and you know Hestis ended up not working out. But now we see, I think, a lot of teams just op you know not openly acknowledge, but like very much come in with a development plan of like, "Hey, you're going to training camp with us. We're going to keep you under contract. We're not going to defer you. You're not you're not going to use lose that year like the Magic did with Chumo KK." But again, the Magic drafted Chumo KK, knowing he was going to need a year to recover from the ACL. They put him in. They put him in the G League. You know, obviously, I think some of his development and recovery was interrupted by COVID. Um, you know, I'm, I'm, you know, one of the great sliding doors for I think a lot of players is a lot of injured players, especially as if there's no COVID. You know, Chumo is starting to play three on three, starting to get back on the court before COVID. He lost a lot of time because the world shut down. Um, you know, not. I'm not here saying that that that's why Chuma's career has kind of gone off, you know, been derailed. But um, I think that was a factor. Um, I think you see a lot of teams kind of enter the season with that plan. Um, so I, I, I want to close out then, you know, we've we got some introduction to this draft class. Um, it, it, before we move on, any other players worth monitoring that that maybe we haven't mentioned? You know, Dalton Connects, I think the big one, the big one. Um, you know, I've, I've seen, uh, Kevin McCullough from, from Kansas, uh, linked to, to Orlando, uh, yeah. yeah, from Kansas linked to the magic before <laughs> we talked about Johnny Furphy, who I think has 
uh, risen, risen a lot. Um, any, uh, you know, you mentioned Ste Stephen Castle a little bit. Um, anyone else that magic, that, that magic fans specifically should be at least keeping an eye on that we haven't mentioned yet. Yeah. I'd say there's two players le uh, that we haven't talked about. One's a really simple one. Kyle Filipowski. Yeah. I don't think people really know what his draft stock will be. And I'd guess at this point, it might be a little bit too high for Orlando. I just, I personally wouldn't take him where he's mocked, which is right around top 10. I think he's better suited going to like the late teens to a team that can play like Orlando needs him. Maybe it's confirmation bias in that, but the other guy would be Jalen Tyson at California. They're not going to make the NCAA tournament. Please don't hold the losing over his head. That is just very inaccurate. I've seen Tyson since 2021. He's from Dallas. Um, got to see him at a camp and, it was funny. I didn't know who most of the players were because they weren't wearing their jerseys, anything. And I didn't know what they looked like, you know, so I didn't know who was who. And at the end, I went up to the person who was holding the, the camp and I said, all right, who is this guy? He's been the hardest worker in every single thing, making sure he's perfecting every drill. He's running it like it's a game winning play that he has to master. And it's oh, that's Jalen Tyson. He's going to Texas Tech or Texas this year. Um, and he was originally going to Texas Tech. He's been in three schools, three years. I think when you just paint a bit of context. He was promised a spot with Chris Beard at Texas. He decommitted from Tech to follow him. Chris Beard goes, eh, never mind, and let him kind of just coast off into the sunset. Jalen didn't like that. Went to Texas Tech. His coach turned out to be a racist or have racist allegations, I should say, at the at the least. Um, and then he went to California, and now he's found his, his role. And I think that hard work really shows in the free throw percentage alone in the jump shooting. Went from 67% with no sample size at Texas went to then 72%, very little sample size. And then now he's at 79 and a half at the time of this recording. So hard worker, modern wing, long athletic does a lot. Yeah. The, the, I mean, and obviously there will be a lot of guys to watch. We're going to have a lot of basketball uh, to, to, to play in. And we'll probably come back and revisit this uh, after the season ends, uh, April, April, May, as we get ready, ready for the draft. So this will not be the last time we talk to Richard about the NBA draft. Um, we will get, we will get to that, especially as we begin to really understand what the magic needs. So this, this is just kind of the, in, uh, like, I want to repeat, this is just kind of your introduction. No, know some of these names, you know, mark them down, keep an eye on them, uh, as, as we get ready for the draft. Um, before I let you go, um, you know, I, I know you're, you're very focused on this draft class and, and everything, but, but I'd be remiss if I didn't ask a little bit about what you've seen from the Magic's rookies. And, and you know, maybe you haven't seen a lot of Jet because he's, you know, kind of playing off in Osceola. Um, but, you know, Anthony Black is someone is, is, is someone that I think a lot of people had questions about when the Magic took him. There was like, why do they need another guard? Why do they need another guard who can't shoot? Um, what have, you know, from what you've seen or, or what you've looked at with him, what have been your impressions from Anthony Black as a rookie? What maybe... You know what? what have been, let's start there. What have been your impressions of Anthony Black as a rookie for this for this Magic team? Oh, he's super impressive. I, I I figured year one would be tough given he can't really shoot like consistently, <laughs> yeah. but he's been a really reliable corner shooter for somebody that's out of label if they can't shoot. It's gone so come a long only, way. Yeah, like, like from even like I know I know I'm sorry to interrupt, but even oh, from summer league to yep. now, yep. was just to, to was like that. Like there's Night still there. work to do. But it's come so far. Like he's so much more comfortable yep. as a shooter now. Yep, completely agree. I mean, just even that has been really impressive. The defense, he's been fearless at times. I mean, the first play of the Knicks game, God, was it already two weeks ago? It might be three yeah, weeks, two weeks ago. Time it's out. I <laughs> mean, all, -Star, all star weekends in the rear view mirror. Man. Thank God. Well, that that uh that very first possession, I don't know if you remember this, it plays back and forth or just always on repeat. He locked up Jalen Brunson and forced to turn over the very first play of the game. Unfortunately, Jalen Brunson went off that game, but um, he goes off every game. Yeah, he's an all star, like you yeah. expect it. But just that, like, very right out the gate, comes out fearless, was not shy about going at him. I think the defense has been really impressive. The the ability to just make something out of nothing at any given time, and like realizing, hey, I'm on the floor. I'm on the floor too, uh, just because I'm not a shooting threat and may not be the top go to scorer doesn't mean I can't find a way to impact the game on offense. He's done a really good job of that, just finding ways on cuts, whatever it is, just really feeding off of everyone else's strengths. And I think that his upside is just ridiculously high. Yeah. And, and, you know, it, my, my takeaway has been even like when he had to step in and start for Markel Fultz early in the year, like the magic, the magic, I think have done a really good job 
making his role small. And, and like my belief with rookies, especially is start them off with something simple. Give that, you know, like not obviously like maybe Paolo is a little bit different because he's, you know, kind of expected to do a lot more. Um, but typically with like kind of role players, my, my philosophy is always give them like something really simple to do, kind of keep them like, kind of give them like bumpers, like on a bowling alley. Um, to say, hey, just stay between these bumpers. You know, we'll 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 bounce you back and forth. We're not going to let you go into the gutter here. Um, do this these really simple things, and then we'll slowly kind of expand your role out. And I almost feel, you know, like from the moment he started those those games early in the season, it it really felt like this is a guy that you have to have on the floor. Like he he has to play because his defensive impact is so great. And whatever you're losing shooting wise, it's it he makes up for it with that defensive effort. And and that says a lot about a rookie because usually defense is where rookies really struggle. And and he, you know, for this magic team with what their defensive philosophy is, you know, I would argue, you know, the reason why Jet Howard isn't playing is because he's still learning how to defend. Um, he's still learning how to defend at an NBA level. They don't trust, trust his defense. Anthony Black has that trust defensively. And, you know, we're going to get to meaningful games here in the coming weeks they're going to, they're going to lean on AB in the playoffs a little bit. Like they're, they're going to push him out there in the playoffs and whatever, however many minutes he plays five, 10 minutes, those, those five, 10 minutes are going to, going to help the magic win a playoff game in my opinion. Yeah. He's going to be a secret weapon. Yeah, for sure. Um, obviously we haven't seen a lot of jet Howard, uh, in for the magic on the main, on the main roster. What, it, what, it, you know, I don't know if you're following the G league or not, you know, I can, maybe I can fill in, fill in some, some of the things there, but what, what do you, what have you seen from jet how seen from jet Howard and, and what maybe from his draft prep, does he, does he still need to get to, to, to be a player that can contribute to this magic team? Yeah, I, I haven't seen a ton. I've focused with the G league more on the ignite, yep. but I have seen some, I, I caught a couple games January, Okay. Um, and I think the shot looks good. I think everything really promising in that regard. He gets the like when he gets to the rim, he doesn't like really. I feel like he doesn't create that much to the rim. It's a lot of like, hey, he came off a screen, you get had the choice. It's almost like a read option, right? You get yeah, to yeah. cover one. And I think he's done a really good job of getting to the rim and finishing when necessary. Um, it's just at this point, like, can he scale up? And again, it's those habits, but none of the habits look terrible, right? One of the things that Michigan was, he was just a ball stopper. And I don't think he's been that, that much in the G league, but sometimes it can be hard to tell because you're playing so many possessions, but what curious, what you think is you have. Yeah. Yeah. So, so whenever we've asked about jet Howard, you know, Jamal Mosley has consistently said the things we want to see from him, we want to see him get up to speed and, and they, they play faster in the G league. You know, there's the, it, the, the G league is a little bit more back and forth. You know, they're trying to get him up to kind of an NBA pace and they feel like the G league is almost faster. Like you have to make fast, you have to make kind of faster reads and, and play at a more frenetic pace. And they think that will help them. You know, Jamal, Jamal actually said something interesting when the magic kind of brought him back after their West coast road trip on thir on Thursday against the jazz. He said, you know, we're really impressed with his decision-making. And it sounds like what the magic are actually trying to see from him is that growth in his decision-making because, you know, the magic's kind of overall philosophy is everyone can do everything, you know, like they want, you know, they run Paolo Bancaro at point guard a lot. Like he's on the ball, you know, on the ball, making kind of these initiation decisions, you know, Franz Wagner certainly do, doing that, you know, they'll put Wendell Carter at the top of the key. Ultimately, I think what the magic are looking for is what I call skill versatility as much as positional versatility. They want players who can do who can play multiple roles within an offense because their offense is still very read based. It's not set based. You know, you go here, you know, they, they have actions to get guys open and get guys the ball in spots they want them to, but it's as much about, okay, we're going to set you up on the wing. Here comes a pick and roll. You have, you know, here's your decision tree off this pick and roll. And we want you to read the defense. We don't want you to just go off the screen and, and, and initiate the next action. We want you to see what the defense is giving you and go and go from there. And so a big thing, I think, especially for their wings is this ability to make decisions. And I think that's what the magic are trying to get out of jet or, or have jet experience at a lower level. So that when he get, you know, when he does play with the magic, you know, not that they're going to put the ball in his hands a ton and expect him to run pick and rolls and do all this stuff. But if the ball swings to him and that's the next kind of, you know, kind of action within the offense, 
that he's going to be able to make the right decisions. And I think that's that's kind of the development that the team is really looking for as much as they are looking to see him be more competitive defensively. That was, I know something I was very critical of him in the, in the draft process as well. And it was, it was, you know, an area that he needed to improve on. And they claimed the ankle injury was what slowed him down and they felt he could be a great defender. And I was just sitting there, just, I, I remember sitting there when Jeff said, when Jeff Weltman said that on draft night, Mike, uh, you know, you've watched more video than me. I'm not going to doubt that, but you sure about that, Jeff? Um, but, but I think, I think again, the Magic are still trying to groom him in, you know, they need the shooting, obviously, but they're trying to groom him into the kind of players that they're just full of right now. And, and that's, big, you know, big guy, you know, big wings who make decisions as much as attack, attack off, uh, attack off, off cuts and passes. Yeah. I mean, that, that's a, that's a really detailed and good summary too. I, I think uh, next year, <laughs> I think give him a year in summer league. Like if he's one of those guys that's like starting to edge on too good for summer league, like, yeah, really promising. I mean, like I, I like as much as you know, as much as I think, and, and look, I'm kind of this way too. The Magic have a full roster. Um, they like they don't have room to add anybody. They're going to have to make some big decisions about free agents, about some free agents. Marco Fultz, Joe Ingles, Gary Harris, Mo, uh, Mo Wagner. I think that that decision's made already. Goga Batadze. Um, they're going to have to find ways to improve the roster. You know, I, I think we all love this team. But we all, I think we all recognize that this this year is probably as far as this team can go. Um, they're going to need to add something externally to help make Paolo and Franz's life easier. And maybe that is Jet Howard. Maybe he helps a lot. You know, maybe the Magic aren't about to go make that humongous move. But it does feel like adding another draft pick, even if you're deferring him another year, um, especially with the amount of draft picks the Magic have coming down the pike. They're one of those, what, 10 teams that own half the next you know, next 10 drafts or something like yeah. that. Um, they got two picks in 2025. Like, I, know, I know that. Um, as much as I've been trying to trade that Denver pick for, for forever, um, they, have two, they have two picks in 2025. There's just not enough roster room necessarily to support a ton more rookies, especially if Jet's going to essentially be a rookie. And so um, as, as, you know, I don't think I don't think the Magic should ever dismiss the draft. You know, you can only take what's given to you. I, I'm a big believer of that. Like a lot of people, you know, Anthony Black's been great, and I think a lot of people recognize that. I run into a lot of Magic fans who are like, you know, I still don't quite understand the Anthony Black pick, and I was just like, and I'm just like, well, who else are you taking at that spot? That's that's that much better. Like you know, Anthony, you know, uh, that 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 that's mu- that's that much better with what we had evaluated at the time. And at the end of the day, you can only take what the draft gives you. Like if, if the draft doesn't have exactly what you need, you still have to do your best to pick the best yep. player you can. And, and look, I think the Magic generally did that. You know, we can be skeptical about some things about, about AB, but um, he's still been really good and, and had a really productive rookie year. And so, you know, to that point, coming back roundabout way, we don't know what the draft is going to hold. Summer League is going to be really important for this Magic team because I, I do expect Black to be too good for Summer League. And I want yep, to see him too. expand his offensive game in Summer in summer League. And I'm really excited to see what he can do with an offseason of work. And that's going to be a big proving ground for Jet Howard. Like, is Jet Howard ready to take a roster spot? Um, you know, obviously free agency will happen kind of before that. But the Magic should have some idea before they hit the draft whether Jet Howard is someone they can pencil into the rotation or not. Um, and, and that I, I, honestly, that's probably going to inform some of their draft day decisions as well, whether that's picking a player uh, or, or or making a trade. Yeah, I, I think it's going to be a fantastic summer. And honestly, like I know we're pushing time here, but like moving back out of 2024 for all the reasons you said just makes too much sense. And next year's draft is just better. I mean, we'll we'll have that conversation at a future date, but there's a reason many scouts like myself, NBA scouts who are actually paid to do this, like they are all, we're all on the same page. If you have a chance to move out for middle of this year's pick, end of what next year's pick instead, like swap it out. It's hard to say no. Yeah. And, but look, as we, as we mentioned, as we went through some of the players and again, we'll, we'll revisit this as we get, as, as at least I get a little bit more serious about who the magic should be taking and what the magic need. Um, there are still players in this draft. Like, do not, you know, every draft is an opportunity. Do not, you know, just because this is a down draft, definitely not a time to sleep. There are solid players, you know, go watch a Tennessee game. Uh, I know Gator fans may hate that, but go watch a Tennessee game. Dalton connects very good. You know, go watch a Kansas game. Kansas has a lot of really, really fun players. 
Um, the NCAA, there will be a star that emerges in the NCAA tournament. Um, it, it may be Zach Eady. Um, I would avoid Zach Eady, um, but that's me. Um, but, uh, uh, and, and, and I'm not just saying that because I'm a Northwestern fan who, and he's tormented, he's tormented us far too much for, for how much Northwestern beats up on Purdue. Um, but, uh, but there are still really solid players in this draft and guys that can help them help the magic. So it, just because, you know, Oklahoma city is a great example of this, just because you're full of young players doesn't mean you skip out on the draft. Like Oklahoma City's built their team and they are one of the top teams in the Western Conference. They're young, but they're one of the top teams in the Western Conference. They've built that team because they do not skip the draft. They do their work. They get quality players and you can still get quality players even in a quote unquote down draft. And, and so uh, there's there's still a lot of work to do. I'm sure you have a lot of work to do to, to prep before June. Um, and, and there's still a lot of opportunity out there. Um Richard, I want to thank you for coming on and, and introducing us a little bit to this to this draft class and, and giving us some names to look at as March begins. Um, if there are if there are any any fans out there who want to uh, follow your work and, and and stay up on the NBA draft, where where can where can they find you? Yeah, I post sometimes on Twitter, Mav Draft, Instagram, NBA Draft Film, and then really the in depth stuff though is on MavDraft.com. I just post everything there. Yep, and don't forget also to check out the Locked On NBA Big Board podcast as well. Um, every, everything draft wise, you know, they, they, I, I know as we're, we're recording this on Friday, if, if you can't tell, so, you know, hopefully Dalton connect doesn't blow out his knee over the weekend. Um, but, uh, you never know, uh, hopefully not. I don't want to shout on anybody that, but, but uh, you know, yeah, we might have, well, well, I might have to put an edge note on this if, if that happens. Um, but, um, I know they talked about kind of the long shot pick guys for number one, for the number one pick. Um, they're covering the draft really, really well. And so as you get ready for the NCAA tournament, I know that's when a lot of NBA fans come to college basketball and come to their draft prep prep. Um, as you get ready for conference tournaments, the end of the college basketball season, NBA draft big board, uh, locked up, locked on NBA big board uh, is your place to go for, uh, for all your draft content. It's, it's where I'm going to go as I'm beginning to, to study and read up on these guys. Um, Richard, thanks again for, for all the information and, and we will talk to you hopefully after the season to, to really dig into some of these guys a bit more. Yes, sir. Thank you so much. I want to thank Richard for hopping on and giving us an introduction to the 2024 NBA draft class. I'm sure once we all become draft experts after the NCAA tournament, we will be back to talk with him after the season ends to get some prep for the draft. I promise my mock draft will be better this time. Question mark. Maybe. I don't know. I'm probably going to trade the pick. I'm, I'm not going to lie. Um, we'll get to that in June. We got a lot of work to do before we get there. Get there, of course, because the, the Magic are in the middle of the playoff hunt. We'll talk about the Magic's game against Charlotte Hornets on our next episode of Locked on Magic. But that's going to do it for me today. I want to thank you all again for listening to today's episode of Locked on Magic. Of course, find me on Twitter at R underscore OMD. Subscribe to the podcast on Apple Podcasts, Stitcher, Tutor, and Himmel, Google Play, Spotify, Odyssey, and all of them. We send the podcast to your podcast enabled listening device. For the latest on the Orlando Magic, be sure to check out OrlandoMagicDaily.com. You can follow us on Twitter at O Magic Daily. And be sure to check out also my Patreon page at patreon.com slash Orlando Magic Hub. And of course, truly appreciate all the support that you give me. That's going to do it for me today, though. I want to thank you all again for listening to today's episode of Locked on Magic. For Orlando Magic Daily and Locked on Magic, this has been Phil Frost from Reich. We'll see you all again next time for another episode of Locked on Magic.